Runners work on a 6 second or 10 tick timer that starts on the tick that they spawn. There are two main actions that they perform, random movement and targeting. If and when they perform these actions depends on a second variable, its state. Since runners spawn in intervals of 6 seconds, this means that they are all synchronized to the same timer. However, the runners could be in different states, which is why they might not all decide to perform the same action. When we say that a runner experiences a targeting tick, these are the decisions that the runner takes. First, it searches for any food within five tiles of it during this tick. If there is no food, then the targeting tick fails, it ends, and nothing happens. If there is food, it goes to the next stage of targeting. Before we can go on, we have to make note that the whole of the OSRS map, including the BA instance, is divided into fixed 8x8 tile chunks. When a runner is in a chunk, its line of sight consists of all the tiles in the surrounding 3x3 of these chunks, minus those that are blocked by solid objects such as the cannon. The runner then assigns a priority to these chunks, with a preference towards the east, followed by a preference towards the north. Therefore, the chunk with the highest priority is the one northeast relative to the runner's own chunk, followed by east priority, southeast, etc., with southwest having the lowest priority. Knowing this, the second step in the runner's targeting is to search for a chunk that contains food, in order of priority. Once it finds a chunk, it will look for the food that was dropped last. As the last step of targeting, it will move towards the food, diagonally first, followed by straight. The runner will keep moving towards his food indefinitely until the food disappears, in which case we say that the runner crashes, or the runner dies, or it targets again and finds a different food with a higher priority. We can see targeting in action with the usual trap, trail, and main stack strategy. When a runner spawns, it goes either east, south, or west. East and south runners stay inside the spawn chunk, but west runners go one tile outside, and therefore their line of sight is restricted and they cannot see trap food as it is too far away. The main stack is at the chunk with the highest priority for west runners, and since it is within five tiles of it, it will target it and eat it, consequently luring it into the spawn chunk and giving its line of sight to the trap, which now has the highest priority. The fact that west runners go just outside the chunk is the reason why it is desirable for the collector to block the runner for one tick, so that it keeps it, its line of sight to the trap. In the previous example, the trail did nothing. Its purpose is to create a wider area to cover the 5 tile radius that gives runners their ability to target, which might be needed in certain situations. Runners spawn on tick 1 of the 10 tick cycle. They start in what we call state 0 or the spawn state. During their first cycle alive, they can only do one action, which is to perform a random movement east, south or west on tick 6 for 5 ticks, stopping after tick 10, therefore moving up to 5 tiles. After tick 10, they will always change into what we call state 1. State 1 introduces the first targeting tick. On tick 4 of this cycle, they will try to target. If successful, then the runner moves towards the food and immediately changes its state back to state 0. The reason why this matters will become clear once we look into crashes. If the runner does not find any food, then the targeting tick expires and on tick 6 it will perform a random movement for 5 ticks. This second random movement only happens if there was no food on tick 4. After tick 10 in this situation, the runner will go into state 2. State 2 is much like state 1, with the difference being that the runner instead has two distinct targeting ticks, one happening on tick 2 and another happening on tick 5. If the runner finds food on tick 2, then it will target it and immediately go back into state 0. If it didn't, then it will try again on tick 5, and if both target ticks fail, then it will perform another random movement on tick 6 for 5 ticks. After tick 10, on a runner that has performed three sequential random movements, 
it will go into state 3. Again, state 3 is much like state 2, however, this time the target ticks happen on ticks 3 and 6. If both target ticks fail again, it will perform a fourth random movement on tick 6. In this case, it will go back into state 1 after tick 10, and it will continue in this manner indefinitely until it either finds food or it exits out the cave. The runner cycle can be summarized in this image. The runners start in state 0 and increase in state every time they do not manage to find food during the cycle. They will always perform a random movement before increasing state, so you can think of the state number as the amount of random movements that, ha that the runner has performed since it has either spawned or last seen food. The only difference between states are when the runner targets. In practice, state 2 is only seen on the first runner on waves 5 through 10, and state 3 is seen very rarely on runners that have done at least two west movements from spawn. The other runners will mostly cycle through state 0 and 1 indefinitely until they die. A crash is when a runner is targeting a food and the food disappears, making it stop suddenly in its tracks. We consider the food to disappear if either the player picks it up, a different runner eats it, or the runner itself eats it. When the food disappears, they will go back to state 0 on the next stick if they weren't already. With this, we can classify crashes into two different types, hard and soft crashes. A hard crash happens when the runner perceives a food to disappear on or before tick 6. Since the runner is no longer targeting food and they are in state 0, on tick 6 they will perform a 5 tick random movement as if they had just spawned. A soft crash, on the other hand, happens when the food disappears between tick 7 and tick 10. The runner stops for a tick and continues moving towards the food tile until tick 10, and then it moves on to state 1 like normal. For this reason, hard crashes are often less desirable than soft crashes. It is important to note that it is not immediately intuitive when the runner perceives the food to actually disappear. Two runners targeting the same food might see it disappear on different ticks, but I will talk about this more in depth later. The exception to crashes are multis, or rather, what happens when the runner perceives the food to disappear exactly on the tick that they try to target, most commonly on tick 4. Since targeting takes priority during this tick, the runner will instead retarget to the next food with the highest priority, if there is one. We've seen what happens tick by tick, but to get a fuller understanding, we need to break down the order that things happen in during a singular tick. If a runner is trying to move to the tile you are on, and you move away, even though you move on the tick after you click, the runner does not initiate movement until the tick after you move. This happens because the server processes the runner's actions before the player's movement during that tick, so even though you moved, the runner still thought that you were there and it is not until the tick after that it sees you're no longer there. Had you moved instead using a mithril seed, the runner would have moved a tick earlier, since a player's inventory actions are processed before a runner's actions. Similarly, if two runners try to eat food on the same tick, only one of them will eat. Which of them eats is dictated by their NPC ID, which is a sign that spawn. The lower their ID, the higher their priority. Therefore, runners that spawn later on have less priority than those that spawned early. ID crashes are a consequence of naively interpreting the runner cycle without taking runner IDs into account. For example, in the clip, runners eat at the trap on a multi-tick in two separate occasions, but despite that, the runner crashes instead of dying. This is because that runner has the lowest NPC ID, and therefore, when other runners eat at the trap on tick 4, the food actually disappears on tick 5 relative to the crash runner, since it already performed the check that the food was still there on tick 4. There is a rare subclass of ID crashes called pit swaps, also known as index cycling, which is a consequence of the limited number of IDs that the game engine can provide. At some point, larger IDs cannot be created, and the game will spawn the next runner with the lowest possible ID. This causes unexpected ID crashes since there is no practical way of knowing when this happened, but it is relatively rare. 
and it usually only is a problem when you try to multi-kill East runners.